Hello friends, welcome to edupediaworld.com. So uh, in today's video, uh, we will talk about rest of the planets. In the last video, we uh, spoke about the first three planets. And in today's video, we will start from the planet Mars. Right. So Mars, Mars is a red planet. It's called a red planet because it looks red in color. Right. The distance between Sun and Mars is 1.5 astronomical unit. Okay, Mars contains a lot of carbon dioxide. Also, uh, this planet is red in color because it looks red and this is due to the presence of abundance of uh, iron oxide in its soil. Right, Mars has only two tiny natural satellites and the names of the satellites are, are uh, Deimos and Phobos. So these two are its natural satellites. So most of us only know about our uh, satellite which is uh, the natural satellite of Earth which is Moon but there are other planets which have got natural satellites. So Mars have got two natural satellites. Right? Now uh, this Mars and Earth and Venus and Mercury these are uh, we have also studied in the previous um, video that these four are called the inner planets because they are more close to Sun. Now let's talk about the outer planets. So what are outer planets? Outer planets are the planets which, which are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. So these are called the outer planets. These are also called giant planets. So what are giant planets? Giant planets collectively make up to 99% of the mass known to the orbit of the sun because these are giant in size, are huge in size. You know, Jupiter itself is the second largest in our solar system after the sun. Jupiter is the second largest. So these giant planets, they collectively make 99% of the mass of the solar system. Right, all four giant planets have uh, rings, although only Saturn rings are they are visible and they can be observed from Earth. Otherwise, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, all four have got rings, right? These uh, four planets are called superior planets and uh, that is uh, because they are you know, huge in their size as compared to the other four planets like the Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. And that's why we call these planets as superior planets. Right. Now, Jupiter and Saturn together, they, they these two uh, planets contain a lot of hydrogen and helium and they are 400 times the mass of the Earth, both of them together. Whereas the Uranus and Neptune, they are less massive because as compared to the Jupiter and Saturn, Uranus and Neptune are very, very uh, less uh, massive because they are very small and they contain a lot of ice. So there, there is a lot of ice on uh, these planets and probably that is the reason that, you know, they are less massive. Okay. Let's now talk about Jupiter. Jupiter is the fifth planet in our solar system and it is the largest uh, among all the planets. Among all the planets, Jupiter is a huge, very huge. It is the largest. What is the distance between Sun and Jupiter? The distance between Sun and Jupiter is 5.2 astronomical units. Right. Another very important thing, you know, you see, oh, picture over here this is an enlarged picture of these rings that you see you know you see these light and dark color cloud rings over here these are nothing but there's a cloud there's a cloud that is moving so this is how they move can you see here it is very clear one is moving clockwise one is moving in the opposite direction like this so these are the clouds that are moving on the Jupiter. Let's talk about Jupiter now. It is 2.5 times the mass of the other planets and it contains a lot of hydrogen and helium that we uh, have seen in the previous slide. Jupiter's strong internal uh, heat creates semi-permanent features in its atmosphere such as cloud bands. So this is the cloud band that I was talking about. This is the cloud band here. This is the cloud band that is moving. 
and Jupiter is known to have 67 satellites however these satellites are not visible from Earth and even the rings are not visible but um, they are available they are very much present on the Jupiter so most important thing what we should know about Jupiter if I have to summarize is that it is the largest among all the planets it contains a lot of hydrogen and helium and it has cloud bands which are continuously moving on the surface of Jupiter it has 67 satellites let's talk about Saturn one very important thing about Saturn is that it has rings so how do we in a picture how do we recognize Saturn Saturn will have three rings that is that is visible so, and why are these uh, three rings flashed in every picture wherever we see Saturn that is because these rings are visible from the surface of the earth also so now the distance between Saturn and Sun is 9.5 astronomical units. So let's now talk about Saturn. Saturn, uh, the most important thing is its extensive ring system. Saturn has 60% of Jupiter's volume. And Saturn is the only planet of the solar system which is less dense than water. Well, the ring uh, system of Saturn is made up of ice and some rock particles and these rings are visible from the surface of the earth and that's why uh, it is shown wherever we see a picture of a Saturn. It has 62 confirmed satellites. So that's about Saturn. Let's, let's move on to Uranus. Uranus and Neptune are, you know, they look blue in color and that is because they are far away from the surf from the um, uh, sun as compared to the rest of the planet and that's why these two planets that is the uranus and neptune they are blue in color because their atmosphere is so cold because they are far from sun the distance between sun and uranus is 19.2 astronomical units so such is you know it's far from sun Uranus uh, is the lightest of the other planets uh, as compared to the other planets it's the lightest and uh, it has a much uh, colder core than the other giant's planets also I've, I've told you the same that it's you know because of the distance from the Sun it radiates uh, very little heat into the space and it has 27 known satellites so that's about Uranus Neptune and Uranus, uh, their size is almost the same. They are of similar size. And look at the distance between Sun and Neptune. The distance between Sun and Neptune is 30.1 astronomical unit. What was the distance between Uranus and Sun? It was 19.2 and this is 30.1. So even Uranus and Neptune are, you know, are far apart from each other, right? Now, if we to talk about uh, Neptune, the Neptune is a smaller, uh, it is smaller than Uranus, slightly smaller, but as compared to the rest of the planets, they are almost a similar size. So, uh, Neptune is slightly smaller than Uranus. It radiates more internal heat, but not as much as Jupiter or Saturn. That is, these two, both the Neptune and the Uranus, they radiate a very, very less amount of heat. Neptune has 14 known satellites. So how do we define a celestial body? A celestial body is any natural body which is outside the Earth's atmosphere. And easy examples are Moon, the Sun and the other planets of our solar system. Right, so we've been talking about celestial body till now. So now let's talk about asteroids. We said asteroids are also uh, available, they are present in the solar system. So what are asteroids? Now, these are small solar system bodies that are composed mainly of refractory rocky and metallic material with some amount of ice in it. So these are called asteroids. They will be smaller than the planets. Some of them will be very, very smaller than uh, the planets. And they keep moving um, in between these planets in uh, a certain orbits you know so these are called asteroids basically rocky like structures here and uh, they range from a few meters to hundred of kilometers in size they may be very very small and they may be very very large also asteroids generally uh, smaller than one meter 
these such asteroids are called as meteoids and uh, they may also be called as micro meteoids so if they are very very small even smaller than 1 meter but there are others meteors uh, other asteroids which may be even larger and they may extend up to even 100 kilometers and they keep they just keep freely moving uh, in our solar system you yeah? know now there is something called as asteroid belt asteroid belt is a belt which is existing between mars and jupiter and the distance of this asteroid belt is extends from 2.3 astronomical unit to 3.3 astronomical unit from the sun so you see here this is that belt this is mars and this is jupiter and in between mars and jupiter you have these asteroid belts so in this uh, some of them may be Uh, rocky some of them may be even icy asteroids so this is an entire belt lot of uh, asteroids are visible in this belt so that is why this uh, belt is called this is a main asteroid belt here right so this is again another picture of how the asteroid belt may look like it is thought to be a remnant from the solar system's formation that failed to collide between the gravitational interference of jupiter because when the solar system uh, when the sun was created there were lot of particles which were you know thrown uh, apart some of them uh, became the planets like the jupiter which is the largest this earth which had life on it like mars like mercury which had which is hot which is the hottest and had no life so likewise when the sun was formed these uh, small uh, rocky like particles some of them became planets the rest of them became asteroids which were even more smaller than planets so they were just rocky structures and they became asteroids right and that's why this is a main asteroid belt here there are some asteroid which are uh, in this belt existing in the asteroid belt there are other asteroids which are just freely moving uh, you know in the solar system this is again how the asteroid uh, belt looks like it contains thousands of uh, tens of thousands possibly maybe million of objects over 1 km in the diameter so this is what the scientist has to they had to talk about the asteroid belt now let's talk about comet the difference between the asteroid and comet is you know when you, when you see physically when you see a comet will have a long tail and that's how we uh, we can recognize that this is a comet comets are generally they are also you know smaller solar system bodies typically only a few meter across composed largely of volatile ice right so these are uh, this is a comet and when a comet enters the inner solar system its proximity to sun causes its icy surface to sublimate and ionize creating a coma like structure it has a long tail of gas and dust of uh, generally it has dust which is often visible to the naked eye because a comet is actually moving uh, so because of sun's proximity or sun's heat these uh, the ice that it contains these generally gets you know spread onto one side and that is why it looks like a tail so this is an icy um, it contains ice so it generally spreads because of uh, because of sun's heat and uh, sun's proximity to this comet and this spread is generally it looks like uh, a tail you know so we say that a comet generally has a tail and uh, this tail is visible to our naked eyes so it looks like a star having a long tail so that is a comet so now uh, this last picture uh, says everything you have a sun which is huge and then you have these small planets and the size of the small planets you can see is shown as per you know the it is as per the relative size between so mercury is the smallest here and the earth looks blue and the mars looks red 
Sorry, Saturn has three rings and Jupiter has a you know the cloud band that we talked uh, about and the two Uranus and Neptune also looks blue in color because they are far apart from Sun as compared to the other planets you know out of all these planets the life only exists in Earth so uh, friends uh, thank you for watching uh, Edupedia world videos I hope you must have understood the solar system and the concept and the various other celestial bodies that are existing in the solar system so thanks for watching the video